evening everyone I've missed doing my lives but I kind of like doing my short videos as well but I've missed doing the lives how's everyone been I hope you all have had a great week so far I'm sorry about last night I had my grandson here so and he fell asleep in the afternoon and didn't wake up till like 7 p.m. So I knew he was not going to calm down and settle down by 8 p.m. I knew it. That's why I thought, well, I'm going to cancel tonight's live. Just postpone it. Just postpone it. Anyway. Um, we're talking about Sebastian. Nothing new has come out. Nothing new at all. It's just all assumptions and theories and back backbiting sort of thing as well. So, <laughs> I thought, right, I'll do a live on Sebastian and just update people. But <coughs> Last week, Seth did a live, his first live. Now, we all know Seth does not like doing interviews. He doesn't. So, for him to do a live is... Um, hold on. I'm just trying to get somewhere. Now. Is a bit unusual. But I'm glad he is. I'm glad he is doing lives. And from what I could make out... Oh, God, you better open up for me. From what I make out, um, his psychic, uh, whatever his name is now, I can't think of, did a lot of the talking. Right. And then... We got to see some new pictures of Sebastian, but I'll go. Just got to pause. So I just think these pictures he's putting out is lovely. It's lovely, but this is all he's got of his son. You know what I mean? This is it. This He hasn't got anything else left of his son. As far as we know. Right? And it's, it's a shame that he feels he needs to put these pictures out there for people to see. Because he's already put videos out there and other pictures out there of Sebastian. It shouldn't need to be putting more pictures or videos out there. It's a shame. I just feel it's a shame that he feels he needs to do that. Because that is what people want to see. And I don't think he should be feeling pressured to do that. That's just my opinion. So, we're going to watch this video. I will speed it up a little bit because it can be a bit slow otherwise. So I'm just going to put it through to share. Um, settings, settings. Play it back. Oh, no, that's probably a bit too quick. Um, one, two, five. Right, so, as you can see, that is Seth, that's the father. I'm going to hide myself because you don't need to see my picture there. That way you'll see more of the video. Okay? And I like to hear Seth talk about Sebastian, I really do. Because when he talks about Sebastian, 
you feel it from the heart. You can feel it. it's coming from the heart. Right? And I feel so bad for Seth because this is not looking good. Unless someone's got him, for whatever reason, this is not looking good. So, and I've also got another video I want to show. Now, some people may not be too keen on this, but I was, I just come across her the other night. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I've been covering the Jay Slater case, the UK, British slag that went missing in Tenerife. Now, that's like going down a rabbit hole as well. So, and I was just watching YouTube on the night time before I went to bed, and she come on. It's just, you know, you just run it through, and it, the, these YouTube channels just automatically start. Well, that was what happened. And I was sitting there listening to her, and I thought, oh, God, she's a character car, 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 car reader. Right? And but I thought, okay, well, let it run. And I'm not joking. She was talking about the Chase Slater case. And my jaw was hitting the floor. Because after I heard that, I flipped over to another YouTube, right? No, the next morning when I got up, sorry, I turned the YouTube on. And information was coming out that she released in the cards the night before. Now, she don't read the cards, she just reads. Well, what she does, she'll, she, the cards come out to her. And then she just tells you what the cards mean. And then let, let you put A and B together. You know what I mean? So we're going to look at that. So, but for now, we're just going to look at this video of Seth. Oh, uh, thank you. So, oh, hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well this evening. Uh, we'd like to welcome you guys to the inaugural live uh, of uh, Seth Rogers on his own channel. Seth is the father of 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, the young man who went missing from Hendersonville, Tennessee on February 26th. So, Seth, uh, good evening, first off, sir. And uh, tell us about your channel. Tell us what the purpose is and how this came to be. Well, I decided I was going to set up this channel because watching a lot of other people's channels about my son, <clears throat> people, wanna, people have a tendency of have gravy in the mouth. And they're not paying attention to what's coming out of their mouth. It needs to be about my son. Uh, everybody wants to throw their two cents in when it's not even worth a penny. And it's just false narratives. I must admit, right, over the past, what, four, four, eight weeks, four to eight weeks, right, it's people are just making up their own opinions. And it's some of it isn't nice, right? Some of it isn't nice, and some is okay. But none of the nastiness, even what Seth has done, I don't agree with what Seth has done all the time. Don't get me wrong, I don't. But I definitely don't agree with how Katie and CP have behaved. I don't. Now, I've been typing up, it's like a marathon, I've been typing up the transcripts of CP and KP's interviews they've been giving. And I must admit, I have to take a break for about three or four days from it because it gets to me, his voice just gets to me. So, I'm nearly finished my third transcript. I've been doing it for weeks, weeks. And there's just things about what he says is a bit hypocritical, in a way. What CP says is a bit hypocritical, I've noticed. But what's been coming out lately is just YouTubers going after each other. And YouTubers making up crap. 
right? And I don't like to see that because none of that, that is helping find Sebastian. We cannot find Sebastian. As YouTubers, we cannot find Sebastian. We can only keep his name and his picture and the information out there. And we listen to what is being said. You know, if they do the job right, they listen to what is being said and then nothing. You know, this is BS. Don't want to know. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Let's let's dig a bit into this, see if it is true. You know what I mean? But a lot of them are just running with whatever they feel is true. Which is their choice. Right? I've got no problem with that. I'll just don't do it on here. I'll try to stick to the facts. And the facts is, on the Sunday before he went missing, he had a lovely day. He spent it with his mum, his cousin, his cousin, his aunts, right? They went to BJ's, they went to bowling, he then come home, then went out for the, no, went to BJ's, come home, then went out bowling, and then went for dinner. And they left that restaurant around about 6.30, 6.25, 6.30. And they apparently got home about 6.39. Uh, later on in the evening, someone, a shadowy figure was seen taking the trash cans down to the curb, ready for the Monday morning. And then... Uh, on the night time, the mum says, come nine o'clock, she says, Sebastian, it's time to go to bed. He comes through and he goes, okay, mum, love you, mum, love you, puppies, and off to bed he goes. Hmm. Right, so that seemed a bit offish to me because I've never known a 15-year-old go, okay, Mum, I'll go to bed now. Like how are I going to bed? Like how? Right. But apparently, Sebastian did. But then she's on the phone to her, her husband, CP, who's three and a half hours away. And about 10 o'clock, she heard something in his, in his room. And she shouts through. Was that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? He said, no, Mum. So, well, whatever you're doing, get to sleep. Right? She then finishes her conversation with CP about 12-ish, when CP apparently tells her to go and put the dogs away and go to bed. So she does. So she gets in bed for 12 o'clock. Remember this, 12 o'clock. That's another point. She, that's a sticking point me. She's adamant she was in bed by 12 o'clock and obviously she went to sleep. She gets up at 6 a.m. and she got, she said in the first interview, or one of the interviews she did, I went in, to, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. Now that was a sticking point. I thought, hold on, you went in and woke him up and he was gone. How can you wake someone up? If he's not there. Right? So I thought, okay. And then apparently she phones Chris about, what, 10 past 6, something like that. After she's frantically running around the house looking for him. And outside the house and all this stuff. And she couldn't find him. And so about 20 past 6, he said, hold on. So he phones a sheriff's department. And he said, within 10 minutes, the police were at their house. And that's where it all started from then, right? When the police turned up. But people have been, I, I'm just as bad. I've been picking away at their story, right? Because none of it made sense. And the only person I, well, two people I felt sorry for was Sebastian, because he was being hidden behind all these lies and BS, and Seth, because he was at work, 
He's on camera. He works at um. Oh, well, he works at a prison place or whatever. But can't remember what they call it over there in the US. But and he was on camera twenty four for the whole time he was there twenty four seven. He's on camera. So that should clear him. But as he's stated many times now, he has not been cleared. You know, if I was Seth, I'd be going up to the police station and going, because he wants the gaming system back. Because I took all the gaming system away. I don't know if he's got that back yet, right? I would go up to them and say, clear me. No, arrest me or clear me. Because this is not helping with my work. He's putting more stress on me. You know what I mean? Just clear me or arrest me. I cried. I forced a hand because he knows where he was. They know where he was. We know where Katie was. Do we know where CP was? He states he's in his RV, five-wheeler, sorry, in the five-wheeler. Is there any camera footage to say he was there from the time all day Sunday or whatever till when he left to go to work Monday morning, right? And all that. We don't know. We don't know. So we don't really know where CP was. We've only got what he's sat telling us that he was at work. Anyway, so this is a guy I feel sorry for. Because I think deep down he's realising he's not going to see his son again. I really do. So let's carry on. out there false information i figured what better than to take that away from them and put it back in control of sebastian his family well and nobody knows the young man better than his father correct well he knows himself better than i do but i'm going to try to be a second close perfect so let me ask you this big dog i mean the questions that uh, that we're getting rolling in by the dozens have to do with your surgery your recovery uh talk to us a little bit about your surgery how did that go how you feeling what was the experience like? That kind of thing. Well, this hand is definitely working again. No pain. I'm great. It didn't. I mean, it was like instantaneous when, when I was done with the surgery. I had no more pain going down in my right arm. So I'm happy about that. Uh, I haven't had to take anything except for uh, ibuprofen and a little bit of relief since the surgery. So I'm good on that end. I'm tired of having to regulate medicines like my doctor was wanting me to. I'd rather not take them. I'd rather have my multivitamin, my fish oil. My B12, you know, my normal stuff that I take every day. And so tell us about that experience of uh, waking up on the table. Uh, tell, we talked about that a little bit. My throat bit. still hurts. I woke up and I had tubes and stuff shoved down my throat. I was trying to rip them out. I actually got bruises where, you know, they had three people on one side of me trying to hold me down when I came out. Um, it was not pleasant. But uh, as soon as they got stuff pulled out of, you know, the tubes and stuff ripped out of my throat, um, as soon as I was able to start breathing on my own again, it was, I was able to calm down. I was aggravated, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, after that, it was just getting me back to the recovery room, you know, then making sure my dressing was good, making sure that I could get up and walk around and stuff like that. And within 30 minutes, I was, I was sitting there chomping at the bed, trying to get out of the hospital. And they were like, no, you got to stay here for three hours. Uh -huh. I, I'm sure you were quite the, uh, the uh minding patient right i was an i was an angel thank you <laughs> so uh tell tell your audience here uh your supporters what you know what types of things were you not able to do when you were dealing with this shoulder pain i mean i have an idea i know what's at the top of the list but uh you know in addition to the to the obvious uh searching for your son i mean what what are the other things that uh you miss doing that you're going to be able to get back to doing now that you're out of pain uh Besides back to looking for my son, because I was under doctor's orders, not I wasn't allowed to drive. A lot of people don't realize that I was not allowed to drive. So every time I drove somewhere, I had to have somebody come pick me up. Um, and it was 
it's not one of the I don't like having to wait on people to do stuff. I've always been a person that just relies on myself. So relying on other people is extremely hard for me. Um, can't wait till I can actually ride my motorcycle. Again, I mean, it, it's it's one thing to be in pain. Sorry about that. I think my internet's playing up. It's not showing anything. And at the beginning, it was it was okay, but like a ten minute ride on my bike, every bump, anything that just jarred it because I had nothing left in between my C five and my C six in my neck except for the nerves. So every time I hit a bump, all it was doing was separating and squishing down on that last nerve. Um, and that's why you didn't ride your motorcycle at the vigil, correct? Yep. I couldn't. I, I mean, that's a, an hour and 15 minutes, depending on traffic, just to get down there. Plus, then the ride back while we waited and everything, or else I would have been on my bike. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else you missed doing? You went to the shooting range a lot, right? I used to before all this happened. And, yeah, no, shooting was, was not, 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 not a task or activity that I could enjoy. So I'll be hitting the range again, <clears throat> making sure I'm still up to par. Very nice. Very nice. You know, well, I, know. Fishing, I couldn't go fishing. I couldn't do a lot of things. Like, I mean, even simple maintenance, like washing my truck was, was not something that I could do. Cleaning my house was a pain in my <clears throat> hind quarters. Uh, there was just a lot of things I couldn't do. Yeah. So so, Seth, I mean, obviously, the, the big reason people are coming to your channel other than to support you looking for your son is, uh, you know, these folks are hoping to see uh, a little more about Sebastian. They want to learn about who Sebastian is. They want to see things from you, the father, that they can't see on any other channel. So I understand that you've got some uh, some pics, some video that you're going to share with the audience and you're going to explain to them what what these pictures mean to you and, and what the story behind the pictures is. Is that correct? I've got some pictures that I'm willing to share currently. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't. don't this, is, this is all I have left of my son until I can find him. That's and true. Bring him home. And when I cherish all these pictures that I've taken, uh, it was definitely a different life than most of these pictures because. So, for some reason, my internet's playing up, but it's not showing that my internet is... Everything seems fine here. So, I don't know what's going on. Let's just check. Come on. Yeah, I can't, okay. Let's have a look. Is that the one? No, that ain't the one. That's not the one. That is, no, no. Could this be? Yeah. I'm just going to run um, a speed test because so much playing up and I don't know what it is. Oh, come on. Yep, that's high enough. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. 
Oh, God's sake. Let's see. If I can get this one. Come on. Come on. I hate this. I haven't done a live in ages, and this is one of the reasons I stopped doing lives as well, because my internet was always... I mean, now this won't flipping work. Right, I'm going to go back into this, because it's just... My internet speed and everything is fine. I don't know why it's playing up. It shouldn't be. Come on. Come on. Don't come on, downloads open. Let's see now. Let's come back to the beginning. Oh, no, I'm just going to add it again. It's playing up. I don't know why. My internet is fine. Brayden is squishing down on that last nerve. Um, and that's why you didn't ride your motorcycle at the vigil, correct? Yep. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I mean, that's a an hour and 15 minutes. To She's doing it again. I swear to God, I hate my internet when I go live. I really do. Getting on traffic just to get down there, plus then the ride back while we waited and everything, or else I would have been on my bike. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else you miss doing? You went to the shooting range a lot, right? I used to before all this happened. And yeah, no, shooting was was not 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 a task or activity that I could enjoy. So I'll be hitting the range again, <clears throat> making sure I'm still up to par. Very nice. Very nice. You know, well, going I know. fishing, I couldn't go fishing. I couldn't do a lot of things. Like, I mean, even simple maintenance, like washing my truck was, was not something to do. Cleaning my house was a pain in my <clears throat> hindquarters. Uh, there was just a lot of things I couldn't do. Yeah, so so Seth, I mean, obviously the, the big reason people are coming to your channel other than to support you looking for your son is, uh, you know, these folks are hoping to see uh, a little more about Sebastian. They want to learn about who Sebastian is. They want to see things from you, the father, that they can't see on any other channel. So, If you're not a member of Seth Rogers' YouTube channel, please go over and show your support and subscribe. It costs you nothing. So please, just go over and show your support. I understand that you've got some uh, some pics, some video that you're going to share with the audience, and you're going to explain to them what, what these pictures mean to you and, and what the story behind the pictures is. Is that correct? I've got some pictures that I'm willing to share currently. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't. don't this, is, this is all I have left of my son until yeah. I can find him and bring him home. And when I cherish all these pictures that I've taken, uh, it was definitely a different life than most of these pictures because these were pictures when he was younger. Uh, I've got some newborn pictures in here. I've got pictures of him still in the hospital, like less than 24 hours old. Like I, I, I try to take pictures of him all the time when he was younger. I try to take pictures. A lot of people don't know that the picture of him on the shirts, I took that picture the weekend that I had him last. And that was the last picture that I got to take of my son. I got to take that one without Katie. Well, brother, I can tell you, you've got a massive army in here with you, supporting you tonight. We feel you. We're with you. We're shedding tears with you. We got your back uh let's light up the chat with those green hearts and, and let's get to looking at these pictures so uh we can get everybody refocused on what all this is about which is finding your son it's about knowing this action somewhat more than we all do seeing some of the videos like the christmas videos that i showed i haven't even let all of those phones back then didn't record like they do now so but wow these are these are some of the pictures i have of him and him in his crib 
That's so cute. Take your time through these, Seth. Take your time, buddy. Me and Katie picked out this whole bedroom set for him. It was a, uh, it was great. I mean, he was a bundle of joy. He wasn't even a year old at the time. So, so what are we seeing up here? Bed's gonna hurt this thing to me. Come on. Come on. <sighs> God's sake, it won't even let me play it now. Every time I click out to stop it, it won't let me go back to play it again. This is my computer now. And it's so annoying. I swear to God. Does anyone want a laptop that is about what? January, February, March, April, May, June. Five months old. Because this one's doing my heading. I'm gonna go out again because every time I stop the video, right, pause it. It won't let me back in. It won't start up again, and it starts to annoy me now. If I have to, I'll just give up playing that video YouTube. I will, and just go on to the other video that I've got. Even though I know people want to see this one, if you haven't already seen it. Come on. Come on. I don't know what, what it's playing up for. Oh, he was up to no good. Definitely way before Harry Potter, and he was so up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> but long blonde hair always I mean I used to find uh getting photos of my long that was a different time. We lived in South Georgia at this point in time. This is about the time that Uncle Taco's daughter would be uh, watching Sebastian. Yeah, we had moved into Colerain Oaks. Who's already learning how to swim and everything else here? I mean, it looks like the world was his at that point. You guys were just living in it. The toys all over the place just looked like he was living life and everybody was getting him and buying him and providing him with everything he wanted. Yeah, everything was his. Absolutely. Everything I like was to his. see toys I mean, about when you I got was his dad. Kid. Katie was his mom. Everywhere. Everything was his. He definitely had a good childhood. He released a very young, good childhood. Me and him used to sit there and we would dance around this whole place because right back here, that right there is like a divider wall between the kitchen okay. and the living room. And then on the other side was our dining room. Our, our eat-in area, which was also extended part 
but there was that divider wall, and you could walk around that whole thing. We would literally, we'd sit there and play music and just dance around the whole house. I mean, the kid loved to dance. So how old is he in this picture? How old was he when he started walking? You know, just to give the audience kind of a, a reference point. He's two in this picture. Okay. Cute. Uh, he started walking at about a year and a half. Okay. He was crawling at, at I want to say, four months he was crawling. Less than four months. He knew he had done something. I can't remember what he had done, but he walked up and I just had to take a picture. Boy, he looks ornery in the picture. I'm not going to lie. He still is ornery. Thank <laughs> you. I mean, he gets that from me. I mean, what can I say? There's uh, not a surprise member in the audience after that I'm, time. Probably, probably not. I mean, I gave him all his best qualities in life. Um, being stubborn, big-headed, ornery, uh, focused, not, you know, I like to hope to think that his curiosity is something I've given him in life too. Because he definitely likes to learn. But it's got to be his way. He's got to learn his way. I was outside, still in Cold Rain Oaks. It's just that you see that smile at the end. I mean, how can you tell that face no? I mean, anything that he wanted, he got. You know, he you can't you can't read too much into a picture, but a picture is worth a thousand words, and he truly looks loved in that picture. Here's something about that picture. If you look at his chin, you see the drool. All right, the kid drooled a lot. All right. And there's one thing that I noticed about him when he was younger is that most people, if they eat peanut butter, how it gets, you know. No, I've watched this kid eat peanut butter and his drool is just like anti peanut butter. Like when he was a kid, the peanut butter would just. I mean, I've got pictures of it somewhere too, but it would never stay. I mean, kid loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then, you know. Started drink, getting him to drink coffee at a later age. And then I introduced him into toasted peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and coffee. It's a great breakfast. I mean, probably not the healthiest thing in the world. But it's better than just a cup of coffee. Man, this kid thought it was the cream of the crop when I took toasted peanut butter and I must jelly admit, sandwiches. I don't believe in giving young kids coffee. My, it was my Aunt Sharon that literally taught me about toasted peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and i learned those when i was i want to say i was like i want to say 15 when she taught me about those i mean that was that was <clears throat> several decades ago but we're not going there yeah you know seth a lot of people don't know that you and i grew up 15 minutes apart of course the part of the country that we grew up in i mean we we figured out a lot of good things to do with peanut butter. You know, we had peanut butter and jelly, toasted peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and banana. I mean, we did it all. Peanut butter and marshmallow, peanut, just peanut butter and butter. I mean, some, yeah. I mean, yeah. like sometimes that's all you got in life is bread and peanut butter. You yeah. know, the, yeah. you, can, you know, peanut butter and Rice Krispies. You can make plenty of stuff with peanut butter. It is, it's like having flour. <coughs> peanut butter is a stable diet. Oh wow! Yeah, he was he was no longer in the crib, that's for sure. But he had a, his own little car's bed. Uh, again, if he wasn't sleeping, he was moving. Look at him, chunky little legs. <clears throat> Again, it kind of looks like the world was his, you know. He just, you guys were just living in it. The 
world is still his. We just got to find him. Absolutely. Just got to find him so that we can go. I mean, if you look down here at the bottom at this picture right here, though, that, that's a portion of the lion. Okay. Because it was everywhere that he went. He really was a Cars fan. And if you look, his, his T-shirt is a Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> it didn't have chunky like. So when he was younger, he was a big Cars fan because he had the Cars tippy cup, huh? the Cars bed. I mean, that that was a big thing for him, correct? Yeah, he was a he was a Disney kid, that's for sure. Okay. You know. Uh, Did he like any other Disney movies? Sorry about the police in the background. Name one. Or ambulance. Got my window open. Sorry about that. I mean, he did cars, he did uh, Buzz Lightyear, uh, Monsters Inc. Uh, so a lot, of the more, a lot of the more animated Disney movies, correct? Yeah, uh, as he got older, I'm a Star Wars fan, um, and he, he of course, became a Star Wars fan as well. Um, his, his mama, she's a Harry Potter fan. I can't and, get into uh, Harry Potter. You know, I'm a Space Wizard fan. And then at Star one Wars, point in time, yeah, she decided Harry to Potter. ask him, you know, which is better, Harry Potter or Star Wars? And he had a hard time making a decision. So I told him, do you want a magical wand or do you want a lightsaber? And being the typical boy that he is, he was like, I will take the lightsaber. He rocked. <laughs> so, yeah. I must admit, I'll take the lightsaber, lightsaber as well. Oh boy. Blackmail pictures. <laughs> Some of these are obviously these pictures are not in chronological order. Um leave my retro 80s uh table and chairs out of it. Boy dead like this stuff. If I remember correctly. Oh, I've got a question. Hang on, I hope I can start this back up again. I don't have to go back out. Right, on the Saturday, the ring out. Katie and Sebastian ring out. And she took a photo of them. Yep, that was a photo of them sitting in somewhere having something to eat. You know that photo they've used for the, um, the flyer? That photo. She took that photo, sorry. Right. Where are all the photos from this fun day they had on the Sunday? Now, I've just, a few weeks ago, I went down to my daughter's. And I don't always think about taking my phone out and taking photos. I really don't. But... His birth, it was my grandson's birthday on the Monday before I went down. Monday after I went down. And she didn't want to have his party or celebrate since the weekend before because it might confuse him when his birthday came up on the Monday. So she's waiting for the following weekend. So I've gone down. Now we had a great day on the was it I went down on the Friday? Yeah, on the Saturday. We had so much fun. Right? And I was there. Snap, 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 snap. Photo, 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 everything. Right? The only time I didn't get any photos was when we was playing bowl when we was playing a game of bowls. Bowling. At the bowling alley. Right? But I've got photos of him at the fair. I got photos at him. Running about in the arcade area while we was waiting to go to do the bowling. Um, where else? Photos around the animal 
sanctuary place, everything. Right? Now, I haven't posted any of them on Facebook because I'm over Facebook, my family one. Because that's my grandson, and I'm not going to post photos no more of my grandchildren on my page. I'm not. So on my phone, I can download them onto my laptop, but I won't post them on to Facebook no more. Because, like Seth said, these are my, his only memories. These are memories that I only need to share with family. And the only family members I've got on there is my, well, my daughter and her partner and the son, my son and his partner, his wife, I should say, sorry, and their two children, my sister and my nephew and my niece. That is it. And the reason I won't post pictures up there is because no one ever inquires about my, my daughter, apart from my sister and my niece. No one else has ever inquired about my daughter, about her little boy, nothing. They've not even gone over onto her Facebook page. None of my family have gone over onto her Facebook page or anything to just get in touch with them. And the same with my son. And I'm thinking, no, because every time I post pictures up, they can actually get onto my page unless I block it and have it as don't have it open to public and I might do that actually set it so it's not to the public just the friends on my page which is very very few I don't have a lot on my main Facebook page and I am thought no because they can come on they can type my naming on Facebook they can come onto my page and they can see how my grandkids are and I'm not having that no more. So I won't post anything until I get onto my Facebook page. I'll do it on, that, on here later. And alter my settings to my, like where my sister can see them and my nephew and my niece and no one out and just friends on my page. On people on my page can see them. Not friends of friends, nothing like that, just friends. I might start posting again on my Facebook page. Hope to God it'll play again. Yeah, I believe that was, I want to say that was oatmeal. And he did not appreciate me taking a picture of him, as you can tell. Yeah, he looks thrilled. Oh, yeah. I've got to <laughs> think. You show me a child when I lose his feet and house, not have a dirty face or food go down the chest and the belly <laughs> and the hands <laughs> and the hair. Look at that one. Got that watch. Yeah, the thing about that is watch. So he, I gave it to him once and uh, needless to say, that was him showing them me the last time I ever found my watch. Because after this, I never found it again. <laughs> that old dad wrapped around his finger, didn't he? Yes, he does. He still does. I mean, yes, he did then. He does now. This is so cute, these pictures. It's my mini me. He's everything that makes me who I am. Oh, God, look how chunky he is there. Oh, my God. Oh. He was in his bouncy at the house. In his little onesie. He was a big boy. He was. Yeah, he was a little chunk there, wasn't he? Yeah, if you look at him now, huh? you've never known how chunky he was as a kid, as an infant. Absolutely. These pictures are precious. Boys, like, I mean, the Mexican restaurant we go to here in Clarksville, uh, they serve 
they serve literally chicken burritos that are like this big. They're the whole size of the platter. And he'll eat a whole one. He'll eat all of it. And then he'll eat his, the chips. And then he'll be like, can we have dessert? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, where I don't know where he puts it all. I know where I put it. You know, but I don't know where he puts it all. We're going to give him credit that he looks chunky because he's got horizontal stripes on, Just right? watching this little bit here. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That looks like his first birthday. His first oh, birthday. my God. Look at him. Oh, my Lord. I have to be honest with you. I, I think he might like a little bit of cake. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know for a fact yet, but yeah, I, I have to think that he thinks the cake looks good. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's watching everybody else while he eating the cake. <laughs> I see that. And there was no cake for nobody else. <laughs> All him. And just so, just so the audience knows, Seth, when you and I talk about Sebastian, we don't talk about him in past tense ever, do we? No. Nope. Still we're talking we're Scott talking Clark. about past tense because these are old pictures just so everybody knows it's no disrespect to sebastian or seth we we're talking about then as was because compared these are now compared to now correct i mean he was one year old this was 14 years ago people absolutely wow. it was his birthday and yeah he was definitely into cake um i still think he's into cake but, you know, we got to find him so we can give him his next birthday cake. Yep. His last one, I believe, was an ice cream cake that I got him. I'm not really a fan of ice cream cake. But his birthday being in December, you know. Now, can someone tell me, if you can, put post me a comment, whatever. What is an ice cream cake? You know what I mean? I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. No. He's 15. He, you know, take him out to dinner. Take him to the arcade. Let him go play go karts. Look at this one. One day old. Oh my Holy Lord. cow. Look at him there. See, he was. He hadn't even been breathing air, oxygen for 24 hours yet. This is still in the hospital. Wow. Yes, I was there when he came out and I took him home. How do you feel when you're looking at these pictures, Seth? Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel a bundle of emotions? Is it all the above? It looks very dark on the screen. That it's all of the above. Plus, it feels kind of like it was yesterday. It's like, where did the last 15 years go? Like, I remember when he was this. He was so small and itty bitty, and he just fit, in, you know, in my arm. And now he's, you know, almost as tall as I am. Where did all the time go? Makes you want to tell the audience to hug their babies, doesn't it? I was just going to say, when you got young children, when you have a baby, that baby isn't a baby for long. That baby soon turns into a toddler. Then a, a little boy or a little girl as they get older. Time goes so quickly, believe me, if you're a parent, you know that. And these moments with the photos are just so precious. Right? I've got photos of my son, I've got photos of my daughter when those little. And 
every so often, I do come across them. Like when I'm tidying up, cleaning out a cupboard or whatever, I come across these photos and I sit there for like half an hour, whatever, just looking at them, remembering when I was a child. And now I've got my grandkids. And it's like having your children again, because even though my one grandson, who my daughter's little boy, is a spitting image of his dad, he's got some traits of his mum. Where my grandson who lives here by me, he's a spitting image of his dad, even his little traits. The things he loves to do, he loves being outdoors. My son loved being outdoors. You know what I mean? Um, and my granddaughter, oh God, she's like my daughter. And the other day, I mean, as that morning on the Tuesday, she wanted her mum to move over so she could sit down or even move completely so she could sit down. And she stood there, dropped her bottom lip like my daughter used to. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And then all of a sudden, she put her hands together, as in praying, and went, please, how can you say no to someone? And I thought, oh, my Lord. But she's the one who's got the, she's the one who's, when she talks, she's got some of the bummy accent. She comes out with some words like the bummies do from Birmingham. But she's also got some of the Scottish accent, where she lives now. And uh, so it's very confusing when you're listening to her talk, right? Because one minute she can be saying a word like, as in a, a brummy would say, and then the next word would be as in what, where she lives now would say, and we're going, please, can you just be one or the other? Not both, it's so confusing. But time does go quickly, and that's why I say, you can't be mad at your kids for long. Don't be mad at your children for long. They don't understand. They're still learning. Right? You have to sort of like explain to them, sit them down and say, you can't do that behaviour. It's like my one grandson has got a, word, a nasty thing now, picking up curse words. You know, the only cursory word I say is feck, as you know, fuck, right? And, but he's using other words. So his mum stopped him and his dad stopped him from using the main YouTube channel, which he used to like to watch Minecraft games on, the program, videos on, not games, videos. But he wasn't just watching them. And then the other day he, he's watching some of and I could listen, hear it, and I went, and I was very polite, and he was very good afterwards. I said, Ellis, do you mind switching channels, please? Because his mum and dad just said, he can now go back onto that main YouTube channel. But if he starts up again with his language, he's coming off again. Well, he, he's watching something, and I, it wasn't being, uh, it wasn't using cursory words. Why? But I didn't like the words they was using. So I just sat in because I was on my laptop doing something. And I was probably typing up some transcript. And I said, Ellis, I said, can you just switch to another channel, please? I don't like that one. And he did. He switched. He said, but Grant, I, was, I said, I know you was watching it. I said, but I didn't like the words they was using. And the phrases they was using. They're not the words or phrases you need to know. And I'm not joking, it was as good as gold. It didn't stop, go off in a strop or shout or bump, bump about or bang about. He just switched it over and watched something else. Man, take care of your kids. Hug them. Tell them you love them. Yeah. Tell them you love them. Because you're not guaranteed tomorrow what to do. Some I heard again today and some I've always 
literally, I've said several times as I've spoke to people, yesterday is the past. Tomorrow is the future. Today is a gift because it's the present. So always think about that. The day, yesterday was the past. Tomorrow's the future. But today's the gift because it's the present. Don't live in the past. Don't always look for the future. Live for that day. Live for each day that comes to you. Believe me, I I know better than most people. You have to live for each day. You really do. Back to his favorite thing, cake. <laughs> I think he was wearing more of it than he had actually eaten it. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. And he doesn't Possibly. look in trouble either. He looks like that you guys were fine with it. Uh, I was told that I wasn't allowed to smash his face in the cake. No, you're not allowed to I do that. I was trying to give him all the cake. I don't think he needs to. I think he looks like he got uh, He did a pretty good job. I think um, he did a really good job there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't need any help at all. I think he's he's got a couple spots right here around the nose. I mean, that are missing. I, I don't. I think the reason his mouth was open is that there was cake and icing stuff in his nose. I mean, he was just trying to breathe. Look at these photos. Breaking so this was on the way home from the hospital. Yep. Yes, it was. Nothing fit him because he was actually really small. He didn't get, you know, feeding him the formula got him chunky. But he had to fill out. I got another picture around here somewhere. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at fat belly. He's with Mama there, correct? Yep. Look at that gorgeous face. He's got piercing eyes. Most definitely. Without a doubt. Uh, I've watched his eyes change color many a times. You can see right here that these pretty much right now are still blue. Yeah. He looks at you. He looks through you deep into your soul. Like, really? Is that how we're going to play this game? <laughs> That's how he gets what he wants. Yeah, pretty much. He's like, see this pinky? You know you're supposed to be wrapped around it, right? See, I haven't watched all of this. I'm watching it for with you now. Again, as you can tell by this shirt, he drools a lot when he was younger. I mean, literally the kid drooled a lot. I got to tell you, you know, a lot of babies do. I, I asked my mom because she said the same thing, except my hair did not lay as flat as your son's. It stuck up that she was so embarrassed she put a bonnet over my head. <laughs> so. <laughs> you 
decided to get the diapers. Wow. Is that what that is? All of this up here? Yeah, he got into the stack of diapers. And that's his lion over to the side, correct? Yep. That's his lion. Then he had his, uh, his little monkey rug. Oh, no. Oh, That's no. adorable. That, is that smile. Me. It's the smile. Spoon didn't help, obviously. <laughs> That is the end of that slideshow. So, Seth, of course, we all appreciate, Sebastian's Army appreciates you sharing those incredibly personal pictures with us. Uh, getting, I definitely, uh, personally, I appreciate everybody who came into this live with me. And I appreciate everybody in chat. And uh, I will let you all know that I have been speaking with law enforcement. I've been speaking with Sumner County. They're giving me information. Uh, I knew, I didn't know who it was, but they called me about uh, the body over in Hendersonville. And they called me about the body that they found in Nashville so that I didn't have to wait too long. Um, so they're keeping me informed of certain things that are going on. This is something I can't understand either. Right? Now, since this, Sebastian's been gone missing, there's been several other children gone, gone missing in Tennessee. Right? In Hendersonville and places like that. And they have been found within a couple of days. Some alive. Some on alive, right? Which is very sad for the family. My heart goes out to all those families. But why haven't they found Sebastian? There's not a scent or a trail of anything of Sebastian. Why is that? And the only thing I can come up with. Is because he didn't leave that house, not on his own free will. He didn't leave that house. Well, he has left it, obviously, but not on his own free will. Good. I do call them. I do talk to them. I will probably be, I can drive. Though limited, uh, I plan on going over to Sumner County on Monday so I can have a conversation with them on Monday. Cool. Just so we're not uh, ignoring the uh, the good people in the chat, are there any updates at this time that you can share with the audience or no? Uh, I do know that there will be some searches, I believe, on the 11th. We're setting things up for a search on the 11th at Rockland Park. We're going back out there. So go All back the out to Rockwell Park. We've been wow. having. We're wanting to make sure that we've, we've gone over everything. We that are is a big still park. handing out flyers. We're still having flyers sent to people. Good. If you haven't got flyers yet, my apologies. It's 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 a slow process at times. I did run out of flyers. Uh, I will be picking more up next week. And I will be making sure that flyers get sent out to people. Uh, as for bracelets right now, I know people want to purchase bracelets. I don't have any more bracelets. I have to make another order. 
So it'll be a moment until they come in. If you okay. don't mind, I'll, I'll talk to you about that after. All right. So uh, there's no pictures being so shown. Seth, do we have anything time. else before I introduce our very special guest? That would be done. Right. So, guys, we have uh, a very good friend, special guest with us tonight, Bullhorn Betty. And uh, Betty, welcome. I want to extend a very sincere thank you on behalf of Seth and myself for all you do for Seth and helping him find his son. That includes, but isn't limited to, the, the shoulder to lean on, the boots on the ground, the helping with the YouTube channel, the uh, support in the community, the support out in the social media streets. Uh, you know, I just, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for giving him an additional sister through this time. So uh, without further ado, uh, you, uh, you take the floor and, and talk to us about your trip to Hendersonville. Yeah, so I thought Hendersonville was enlightening. You know, we did. I did find out some information for myself. Uh, we were able to uh, post. You know, I, I posted just about half. He handed me a stack of flyers, but I posted about. I think it was about two hundred of those. Uh, I think he gave me like close to three hundred, and so I have about fifty of those left with some bands. I'm going to be mailing those bands out. I haven't had a chance to with the. A uh, new girl, but uh, I thought it was pretty successful, you know, with a few hiccups, you know. Sure, sure. So, what did you think about the community of Hendersonville? Was it your first time there? It was my first time there. Um, I was a little disappointed in the lack of signage. I have to be lack of anything to even represent Sebastian, you know, even ribbons and, and bows and, and just something. And I, I, I was a little disappointed that I didn't see more of an, I, I've been in smaller communities that had larger support, you know, larger um, array of signage throughout a county. I didn't see that here. There was nothing like that here. Um, so I think that that was a little, um discouraging but you know we posted the flyers i hear the flyers uh certain flyers have come down so i'm hoping that people continue to put them up because uh what i learned going into these communities is just because you know we may know it on social media the people maybe one or two houses may know about it but what you find out is people down the road people that don't watch the news or are really busy. They don't know about this. You have people li literally living in a, a community right next to you that has never heard Sebastian Rogers' name. I guarantee it because this is something I see in every single community. That's why it's so important to have the signage, to have things out there so people can see that, see it and, and pay attention to it. And I feel like that was what was, uh, you know, missing. So we did our, what we could do to correct the issue. Right, right. And so you, after you did a little dig and when you and I spoke, you, you kind of acknowledged that you knew that there was signage there at one time. You knew there was, you know, yard signs, there was telephone pole signs, there was all these things. And then, and then they weren't there. And then you go flood the community uh, with, with more signage. And then you're hearing now that, here we go again. It's been taken down. I mean, just, you know, just your thoughts. I mean, why, why is that? I don't know who would take signs, missing person signs down for a 15 year old boy, for any person, for any person, not just a kid, but for any person. This is something I, I really don't understand because the child is missing. We need to find him. Why would anybody want to remove signs to put his face in front of people? That I will never understand. And again, this this is across the who re, I have never in my life heard people removing missing person signs or flyers before. I, I've just never experienced a situation like that personally. Well, you never heard of it. The only thing I can equate that to, because we don't, I live in a small community here in Oklahoma, 
every time I walk in Walmart, walk out of Walmart, you see the signs that are there in Walmart, the missing children signs. Wow. And I look I at those. Know. Not to interrupt you, Tony. Go ahead, buddy. <clears throat> I know that I've been to places to put flyers up that I've been to before. And they had been they, people in there. Like, can I talk to your manager? Not to sound like a Karen, but I'm, you know, I, I asked upper management before I put signs in the building to make sure that I have the okay. And I've had them sit there and be like, you know, we just took his picture down. We took the last poster down, you know, a week ago. And it's like, well, wow. why? And they were like, somebody came in and said that he was found. Yeah, and it's like people keep putting that that he hasn't been found. He hasn't been found. If he had been found, I sure wouldn't be out here posting pictures, you know. And it's just, it's, it's horrible what the links of some of some of these people who have no humanity left about them. This is a missing child, whether it's my child or somebody else's child. To sit there and walk in and be like, "Oh, they found him. You should take the sign down." Yeah, you didn't go in and take it down, but you went in and gave false information to somebody, and they took the sign down. Because, of course, if they found him, why would do we need signs up? But he hasn't been found, and they're spreading false information. And the fact is, is that it goes on in the real world as just like it does in social media. And it's... That's sad. In fact, Lack of human. And they were going to tell the story. You know, Seth, I could tell when I saw Betty's face that that's the first time she had heard that too. Um, You know, when you get to thinking about why a good person would take down a sign, that's really the only explanation is that they're being told that the child is found. And I and and I got to tell you, that's uh, that's a new one to me, and that's really odd. Thoughts on that, Betty? Well, I'd like to know who, (laughs) you know, who would do that? It seems like somebody, somebody that has a dog in the fight. I mean, why would anybody do that? Just preemptively go up to see a sign and say, hey, you know, he's been found and we're going to take it down. I mean, it it just, who, who, who would do that? Like, I, I don't, again, I don't understand why anybody would not want a missing person flyer up for somebody that's missing. Well, and I know on your show, you talked a little bit, just to shift gears a little bit, you talked about some of the areas of interest. Uh, don't, yes. don't want you to share anything you haven't already shared, but I know after kind of wrapping your brain around the area, making making a few drives here and there, that you, you've got some areas that you really think are, are kind of hot spots. Can you discuss that? Um, I'll discuss them vaguely, um, but obviously the three communities are Hendersonville, Gallatin, uh, which is basically Sumner County, but there's very specific areas there. There are a couple things over in White House that I'd like to look at, but you know, I think we have some gaps that we just need to resolve. And I think that um, looking at this in a different with a different approach might, may come up with something right. you know right now we we know that the area around uh ground zero which is the which is sebastian's home his primary home with katie and chris has been thoroughly searched at least the five a mile radius has been searched researched over searched so that's not the place that i think we would be looking at we're also having people, you know, reaching out to autistic centers. Um, we're, we're getting flyers into um, Alaska because people were concerned about Alaska. Although that's not going to be an area that I can search, it's, it's still something that we can infuse with some information to see if there's any type of leads out of that area. Um, so as far as search areas, I really think it needs to be the three places. I mean, he was at in Hendersonville. So, you know, that should be a given. Um, There's family in Gallatin. That should be a given. And, of course, you know, there is a route. So 
you know, that has to be looked at. Right. Right. Well, you made a, you made an interesting comment uh, the other day to me when we were talking about this uh, protocol for missing, is it missing persons, missing children? Can you explain that? Yes. So it's the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. There are, they are basically the, um, the house that, you know, they have built into most of the statutes around the country, them being the clearing house for missing persons. So how it works is law enforcement has to meet our, 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 the Amber Alert. So law enforcement has to meet some certain criteria, but, but the, the, the nonprofit that deals with it is the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. And so they put all your Amber Alerts up there and they monitor those. Well, they also do a lot more than just just that. They train law enforcement. They give clear directives on how, you know, what the proper protocol should be. It's obviously not something that is written in stone or something that is, you know, they have to do by statute. Some people have adopted it by statute. Some pla- some states have not. And so they they basically state because you don't know the situation that's going on when there's an initial missing person, you should always, even if you feel like it's a runaway, you should always, always, always treat the area as a crime scene. We heard that there was people in the house. We've heard that there's not forensic testing. One of the protocols is you you go into the house, you secure the bedroom, um, and you get the necessary paperwork signed up front by the owners, which at this point would be Katie. She was the one that was there when law enforcement got there. And that gives them the right to search that property and search that um, bedroom. And at that point, when they secure that paperwork, they should be immediately doing forensic testing. Um, Not necessarily immediately if, if it doesn't warrant it, but we know that there, that the DA was out there within 72 hours. We know that there was a major change in the, and that's another thing. Who's ever known of a district attorney, a DA, be called in, right? In a missing person, missing child's case. He's a missing child. The first day, his dad is missing. Second day. And the first day, his dad has a run away. Right? He, run, he just left the home himself. Second day, his dad is missing. And that's when they went to an Amber Alert. The third day, it's like they did a 180. And it's like, he didn't walk out that house because there's no scent. There's nothing about this child anywhere. No footprints, nothing. So on Wednesday, the, the police sort of gone, like, did a 180. And I think that's when the DA was called in on the Wednesday, because it was after that we literally had zero communication from law enforcement, apart from when they come up and done a press release stating they were scaling back the search. That was it. And after that, we've had no releases. The only press release we've had is on their Facebook page or on uh, TBI's page. And if you go on TBI, you've got to go down, 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 down to find Sebastian. He's way down in the list there. And another thing is I found out, I don't know if if they have now, but up until about two months after he was reported missing, Sumner County hadn't even put Sebastian on their missing children's right Facebook page, on their page, Facebook page, as a missing child, had not put him up there. Why? Two months later, he's still not on the Sumner County Police Facebook page. TBI had him there, but Sumner County didn't. 
this case, that took this case 180 degrees within the first three days. We know that um, law enforcement scaled back the searches and started looking at this as an investigation by day eight. So even if it wasn't done initially, at those points, that's when that should have been done. But within three months is everything I'm reading is when you should have your forensics collected. You're not getting that here. So we're learning that, that there may not be any forensics at all of that house yet. And I just can't imagine five months later when this child put his head in a bed inside that home and there's, and he's not there, how we don't have at least forensics for that room. There's probable cause to get forensics for that room at minimum, maybe not the whole house, but definitely that bedroom. Seth, can you confirm or deny that, that that's been done? Do you, do you know? I do know that uh, <clears throat> I was there at that house uh, every day for the first three days. I did not stay the night there. I drove all the way back to Clarksville. <clears throat> would take a different route. Every time that I left here and went there, I would take a different route because I'm looking for my son. But they never, they had dogs in there, but I never once saw them come in with any type of forensic people. And yeah, Betty, that was the initial day, uh, there was a bunch of people in the house. Uh, detectives, law enforcement, but I didn't see anybody, you know, cordon offing anything to make sure nobody could go in there, dusting for fingerprints to see if there was other fingerprints. That is another, uh, that's another thing that's in that National Center for Missing and Exploited Directive is the fingerprinting of the room. I found at the front door where they think Sebastian went out of, they didn't even fingerprint, you know. Well, apparently, I've got it in one of the transcripts. It's in one of the transcripts I've just typed up. That apparently, CP asked them about fingerprinting and all this lot. And apparently, law enforcement said, no, it's not needed in this case. What? You know what I mean? I've got in one of the transcripts, and one of these days I will go over the transcripts with the video. You know, at the moment I'm just working on the second, even though I've done three, three transcripts, I'm working on the third transcript, which is the second interview with uh, the Duchess, right? And that one is coming out with some information, which I think is a bit, it's like, this is where it's like bringing in the hip hat or whatever it's called. And he can't answer this question. He can't even tell us why he wasn't at the house in February. He can't tell us that. Why? Why can you not tell us why you weren't at the house in February? Because it will hinder the investigation. Right? So it doesn't make sense. And as I said from day one, none of their interviews have made sense. None of what they've come out with. And now they've got rehearsed so much. You know what I mean? They know it word for word. Literally, we do. We've heard these interviews. I've gone over these interviews time and time and time and time again. And I know them. Literally, word for word. And so I'm working hard on getting these transcripts done because it just gives me another insight into what, like, shush, shush, shush. okay, shush. Um, you can hear them say it, but it doesn't actually, with me, it doesn't come right. You can hear someone say something, shush, but you, it doesn't actually stick with me until I write it down. I've said this from before when I was at school and I was revising for my exams. I would write it all down out of the books that we was reading from. 
write it all down, key words and things like this, so that it would stick up there. Even now when I read a book, any book, right, I will read a page, but then I'll start again at that top of the page and read it again. And then I maybe read it a third time so I get it in my head properly. Like understand the plot of the story, who's doing what and all this stuff. So as I said, it takes me a while. So I have to watch these interviews more than once and I have to write it all down, which I've decided to do, which I am doing. And I'm learning a lot from these interviews, a lot. There's just things here that I feel like, you know, it, it, I don't want to say that the, the stuff is is lost. It, I don't think it, it is. But, you know, they've got to get in there and get some of this stuff done. And I don't understand what is taking them so long. I, I can't, for the life of me, figure this out. Now, would Betty, would this be, you know, for the audience, is this where the luminol comes into play and things of that nature? Yeah, they, I, I, they've been using a, a new product called Blue Star mm -hmm. as opposed to Luminol. But either way, it's it's basically the same thing. They've got to spray. You've got to black out the windows. You, you it's they, you, it's a noticeable process. Like they put almost like these black trash bags over the windows. They have to have it pitch black dark inside for some of this stuff to fluoresce. Some of it's faint. So the darker it is, the better they can see. And that's why they do what they do. It also helps identify, like amino black, helps identify any type of latent um, stuff that you can't really see. Well, I'll tell you something. There's a, a couple, right? And I believe it was their daughter had gone missing, right? And um, they wanted, after a while, they decided, look, we need to sell this house because she wasn't here, and they're paying a mortgage on this house. They took the mortgage over. But before they did sell it, they wanted them to come in. Or was it their house? I think it was their house. They wanted them, the police, to come in and do the looming art and whatever in the bedroom where she used to stay when she stayed at home. Just to show everyone and give them an easy conscience as well, like nothing happened, because no one was believing them that they had nothing to do with it. So they called them in and they came in and they did the whole looming hole and whatever, and they found nothing. Right? But I've known cases where three, four, five years down the road, they've gone back to that apartment or that house and they've done the looming hole. And believe me, blood can get into the smallest, smallest of places. You may think that looks clean. You may think, oh, I can't see no blood. But believe me, looming hole and, or whatever that ever one is they use will show it even if it's only a speck, a tiny little speck, it will show the blood. And this is why I believe, because we've never heard of Sebastian having any accidents where he's cut his finger or had a nosebleed or anything like that, right? Never have we. So if they went in and did the looming on in their bedroom and they find blood, and then the parents turn and say, the father or mother to me, well, he did have a nosebleed, or he did cut his leg, or he did cut his finger. Uh, you didn't tell us that at the beginning. You know what I mean? Now, with my daughter, she was prone to have nosebleeds when she was a very young baby. Even up to the age of, what, two, three, she could just be sitting there watching her favourite film, and I'd go in to check on her. She'd be sitting on the sofa, and I'd look at her, and I'd go, oh, my God. Uh, just go there, sweetheart, and I go in the bathroom, get these tissues and wipes and flannel, right, a cold flannel, and I clean all her nose up because she hadn't realised her nose was bleeding. She hadn't realised it, right? 
and it was all around like just like if you got a bit of a runny nose the blood was just like there and so i've cleaned up her nose and everything and i think she just got so used to get having these nosebleeds she didn't pay any attention to them but i was told by the doctors don't worry nosebleeds are a good thing because if if she wasn't getting the nosebleeds then that could be a build up somewhere else you know what I mean, uh, like a, a blood clot building up somewhere else. But because her nose was bleeding, not every day, not every week, but because she had these nosebleeds, it was clearing any clots out. So it was a good thing. She don't get them no more. But if anything had happened to my daughter, I'd say, look, she was prone to having nosebleeds. Right? And with my son, oh, he's prone to cutting himself. He falls over a lot, he's great. he cuts his legs, his arms, his hands. You know what I mean? So, there's going to be, oh, and he's prone to being sick, like, like, the exorcist. Imagine an exorcist and it's going across the room, right, behind wardrobes and cupboards and you name it. I would have to clean the whole Clear the whole room out just to clean the room when he'd been when he'd been sick because it didn't just stay in the bucket. He literally uh, across the room. It was like you don't want to know. You don't want to go there. But I would, if anything had happened to my kids like this, I would be saying, "Look, they are prone to nosebleeds." So yes, he is prone to being sick a lot, and he does get a lot of cuts and grazes. So there might be blood around the bedroom, which we can't see, but there might be blood specks about the bedroom. You know what I mean? But they've not come out and said anything like that. So if they went in and dig that looming hole in his bedroom and found specks of blood, they'd want to know why. Uh, footprints and, and other types of stuff that kind of, you know, none of that has been done. And then we hear that Katie has cleaned the house. You know, some of that forensic stuff could have been removed from that cleaning. Right. So I'm just, I, I, I just got a problem, you know, being, seeing these cases and knowing how important forensics are in these cases, not getting them done up front is to me, it, it, it doesn't feel like every stone's being turned over is, yeah. is all I'm saying. I agree there. Right. Right. So what else, Betty? Do you have anything else? Well, I, I think the only thing right now that I that's anything else for me is just getting everybody refocused on the real purpose of why we're all here. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Seth was showing a child, you know, a, a child in, in his infant form. I mean, this is a human being that has been missing for a significant amount of time. And I really hope people take that and, and internalize it because this family does need help. This child still needs to be brought home. And there's a lot of stuff going on in these cases in on the internet that doesn't need to be going on. For example, the constant attacks, can we, is, is it impossible for people not to speak about Sebastian without attacking somebody? This is a 15-year-old boy that disappeared. I didn't do it. Tony didn't do it. Seth didn't do it. This child is missing. You know, attacking people that are out looking and trying to make a difference and trying to help, I just don't feel it's a you great know, path forward. One of the things that kind of aggravate me on my end is that, you know, I work in law enforcement and... I'm the type of person that I would take a hundred inmates walking across the field, you know, looking for, you know, any type of evidence or whatnot, whether I like them or not, they have a purpose. And while there are some of these people out here on the internet that are sitting there holding their shows, doing their clickbait, you know, which I know, they're probably going to have this right after we end this live. They're going to be all over it. 
they're going to be throwing as much shade as they can at me. That's fine. It's hot outside. It doesn't bother me. I mean, but it shouldn't be that way. Is my point. You know, you know my son shouldn't be missing. That's true. There's a lot of there's a lot of things in this world that are wrong. That are just wrong. Human trafficking is wrong. You know. Doing things to children are wrong. You know, people being just mean and hateful is wrong. Nobody will understand where I'm coming from. When I sit there and I am upset with his mother and that whole family, it's because I don't see them doing anything. When I sit there and I told people to kick rocks, only I used a particular other phrase that there were memes about. I told people to F off mm -hmm. because I will work with whoever I can to try to bring and find my son and bring him home because he's all that matters to me. And we're going to have people out here throwing shade at me. You know, well, I don't like the way he sounds now. I don't like this. I don't like that. Well, I don't like you. But if you get your ass up from behind the fucking computer, it's, it's, Put out some flyers, man. That's the bare minimum. While you're sitting there throwing. Well, maybe what, maybe what we could do. House, understand that I'm not throwing rocks because I'm out there. I put out flyers. I'm literally going to go pick up more and hand out more flyers. I'm running out of supplies. Not because I don't have it. It's because I have to reorder it. It means I'm going through my supplies. Right. All right. And you handed me you handed me flyers and other stuff. I still have the the uh, bands. I'm going to be sending out with the flyers. I haven't I haven't had a chance to do it since I've been back, which kind of sucks. But I will be getting it out uh, when I return here in two days. I'll be leaving tomorrow, and then I'll be returning here by Wednesday. I mean, my sister sent me pictures yesterday, and uh, you know, and Friday. Well, that was yesterday. Right? Yeah, Friday. She sent me pictures of of. And she had to make two trips to the post office because she had taken a whole bunch of envelopes with with the bracelets, flyers, and everything. Because she came up here and I gave her some, and um, you know, and she sent them out to people. And then she turned around and she sent me another picture. She was, she was like, "I went to the post office, came back, and she had 15 more people that reached out to her for flyers." So she turned around, packed more flyers into envelopes, along with bracelets, and sent them out. Mm -hmm. You know, people are doing what they can. But just sitting behind your computer, not doing anything. Come on, can't you can't you be better than that? I mean, every day I wake up and I just want to be better for my son. I, was, and I think the context too, it really taken out of context. That aggressive statement you made was simply you and your way trying to say that you were willing to do anything it took to help find your son. And if and if people didn't understand that, they could take a hike. I mean, it was it was a bigger context than just the two words. Correct. It was there. I mean, there was a the person that shared that made it the first thing that they shared. Mm hmm. You know, it was actually at the very end after dealing with everything that I had dealt with, you know, the vigil, emotions were high, you know, Chris showing up twice in one day at the school. And it's like, dude, you couldn't even say this the first time you showed up. Why do you got to show up the second time and not actually stay for the vigil? That kind of hurt. Mm, like, you want to talk about he's your stepson? But yet you don't want to show up for the vigil and then you want to sit there and tell me vigils are, are for, you know, for remembering the dead. No, not that's not. a memorial, dumbass. Yeah, and then not only that, but there's all types of vigils and it was a prayer vigil. It's it's prayer well, for his we more together and ask for God to enlighten us and to bring what is done in the dark to the light. And we are all there in one purpose. We were all there to ask God to bring Sebastian home, to show right. us where he is, to make sure that he's safe, 
to make sure that he's being protected by his angels. I am not there to protect him. I am asking God to protect him. And that's what we should do. And everybody that's in the chat, why don't we put some prayer hands, some green hearts up? And I still, I like, I like the. I, I thank everybody in chat. I thank you for coming in this live stream. I mean, my apologies that I don't have more information. And there is a, there will be a day that I start this and I'm going to have my son standing right next to me and be like, it's paid off because he's home. Yeah. And keep him out. I, keep I him think out it's smart. A little more place. Yeah, and I think it's smart that you you showing his baby photos, you know, keeping, letting people know that, you know, he is a child. He's a child that's loved, that, you know, you want him to come home. You know, people need to know that he's human. I feel like some people on social media sometimes feel, you know, it's just a, it, they don't, it's just something on TV or something on a screen but this really is a human being that was loved. And it's a huge loss with him out of your life right now. You're grieving a lot. You want your son here. So we need to be working together to try to find and locate him. He's somewhere. Somewhere. He's somewhere. There is no, there is nothing but find Sebastian. Right. So what I think what I think we want to do, uh, just so the audience understands, we are going to be going through all of the questions as a team. We haven't settled on the time that the show will be each week. Uh, we will work on that. We will get that out. I think, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong. We're working on having the show probably not on a weekend, but the same day and, and time each week. Is that correct? It won't be the same time and day because once I go back to work, which I'm waiting, I've got doctor's appointments still. I have to be cleared by the doctor before I can go back to work. Um, but when I do go back to work, I don't have the same days off every week. My, my schedule is a two-week schedule. Okay. So it's like if I'm off on Wednesday one week, I am not off Wednesday the following week. So we're going to work to do to do a once a week type show or or once every two weeks type situation once we figure that out, correct? You know, I want to keep everybody informed with any information that I'm allowed to share. I want people to get it from the horse's mouth. I don't want people getting false information from from you know people that don't have a stake in this. I have a stake in this. This is my son. You know. If I'm not going to fight for him, who is? Absolutely. So what we'll do is we'll work together. Uh, can't can't tell you guys in the audience how eternally grateful we I are uh, on behalf of Seth and Betty and myself. Uh, especially, uh, Betty, you've got a, a huge group of your supporters in here. We, we can't tell uh, those folks how much we writing. appreciate them as well. Uh, Appreciate everybody's kindness in the chat, everybody's support in the chat. And, uh, you know, let's let's just remember that this is about Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15 years old. If you do have any information, 1-800-TBI-FIND. Uh, let's keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, let's get refocused as a, as a group, as Sebastian's army, and, and let's, let's bring this child home to his father. Amen. Amen. And I just want to give a big shout out to all the mods out there as well. You guys did an amazing job tonight. Um, you guys allowed 1,700 people to hear a, a message from Sebastian's father. And I mean, it's really horrible when I get a text message from you all like two hours before the show starts going, hey, you got to get mods in because we already got fake people in chat. Running their <clears throat> their keyboard warriors, you know, with their little false information and everything already in chat. And I'm like, the show hasn't even started yet, though. Um, I'm like, okay, 
And then I go look, and I'm like, oh, wow. Look at all this. I mean, if they were to put in a third of the effort they've been doing to make a new account to go hand out flyers. Amen. You know, do something constructive. Positive. Absolutely. If you're going to complain about something, come up with some solutions. You know, That's my what dad I'm saying. Would have told me if there, you got a problem with something, then you got to go you got to be willing to part, be part of it to change it. Yep. Yeah. So, be a part of the right solution, there. not the problem. Well, I just want to thank you both, you know, so much. Right. I'm going to leave that there because it's the end. It's literally, well. Right, now I'm five. One and a half minutes left. <laughs> right. So. But. I wasn't going to watch it all. But then when I seen it, I thought, oh, God, we've only got another half an hour left. So that's why I watched it all. And I appreciate Seth showing us those photos. I really do. Because they are precious. And we've got to stay hopeful. We've got to keep hope alive. We've got to believe that Sebastian is out there somewhere. Because I, even though all the odds are telling me different, right? My gut instinct and all this lot is telling me different. My heart is saying we've got to keep the hope alive. We've got to. We cannot go around saying, it's deceased, it's deceased, it's dog. You know what I mean? I don't want all that doom and gloom. Right, so we've got to still keep hope alive here. So I hope you enjoyed that. I was going to show you another video of another one, someone else, but I might keep that for next week. Right, because... That's interesting to watch. Even if you're not into the tarot cards or all that lot, it's interesting to watch. Just to, because she's not saying what has happened. She's just reading what the card says. Not even what the, in what, like, if, if it's got on there, love, and whatever else, then she'll, she'll read what it says on the card, and that is it. And then she lets you put, the picture together, which I, I'd rather some do that than tell me what they think. Everyone's got their own opinions, so it was it was interesting to watch that, and I haven't watched it all, so I'm gonna go back and watch that to the end. But I haven't done a live for a while, and especially on Sebastian, I haven't, and that was because there was nothing new coming out. And as I said, I cut I. I haven't looked, I've been looking, I've been following Sebastian, don't worry, I had been following, and it was just one YouTuber and another YouTuber and then another YouTuber arguing and fighting, and I'm thinking, look, at the end of the day, we're here for one person, and that person is Sebastian, this lad here on the screen, we're here for Sebastian, not for Seth, not for CP, KP, the virus sucks. No one. We're here for Sebastian. Why can't we just put our, put your feelings, what you think of each other down, put them to one side and focus on this lad. Right? Just focus on this lad. Because I think the focus, a lot of YouTube now, because I said this would happen. I said once law enforcement stopped giving us updates, and the report, the news reporters are all gone off on to other stories. You have YouTubers and people on Instagram and Facebook and whatever, coming up with their own conspiracy theories and their own theories or whatever. Opinions, yes. Theories, yes. But keep them within reason, you know what I mean? And for people to go around saying, oh, you can take that poster down. He's been found. That's wrong. Right? 
And this is why this case needs to get onto the news channels again. Right? So this can be brought up on them. And then people see it. Not just people on YouTube. People who do watch these news channels will see it. Okay. So it's not been found. Shop owners will know. Okay. Until we hear differently by these news channels, that poster stays up. You know what I mean? Because if he's found, it's going to be all over the papers. All over. Oh, sorry. Oh. It's going to be all over the news. All over the papers. All over YouTube. Facebook. Instagram. TikTok. You name It's going to be everywhere. Right? So until you hear it on the news, or off TBI, which will be on the news because it'll be going to a press release, Right? Just keep the flyers out there. Keep putting these flyers out there. And keep reminding these door owners, he's not he's not been found. He's still out there somewhere. Can you please put these post flyers up for us? I would love to be able to do something like that. But I can't. I'm in the UK. And I feel so bad because I can't do that. Because I know if I was in the US, I would be flooding my town with flyers. Flooding. Every day, I, or whenever I was going around, if I was in a car, on a bus, on a train, I'd be putting, I'd have flyers in my bag. So if I saw somewhere, like a shop that didn't have a flyer up, I'd go, excuse me, would it be okay if we put a flyer up? Could we put a flyer up here? Because this boy is still missing. Not many shops are going to say no, because if they said no, I'd go, really? Why? Right? They need to be flooded again. They need to get round to these shops and just say, look, unless you hear it off on the news by TBI or in the newspapers, please keep the flyer up. Don't listen to what people are coming in and telling you. Wait until you hear off the news channels. Because it will. It'll be everywhere when this lad is found. Either way, it'll be everywhere. So let's keep hope alive that he is out there somewhere, that he is being held somewhere, he is hidden somewhere. Right? And to stay positive. And like Seth said earlier, Hug your kids. Tell them you love them. Because every day is precious. Because they do grow up so quickly. I even said to my grandson when I went down for his birthday, I said, will you stop growing up? Can you just, I wish you would just stay as that little one-year-old. You know what I mean? Or two-year-old. Or even three-year-old. But nothing past three. You know what I mean? I like... I miss those days when they're like a baby up to three and then they get into the little boy's stage and it's like, no, they're not doing that. They're not eating this. They're not wanting to do that. They want to do their own thing. Right, so please, if you've got young children, oh, these children are growing up and living their own lives, give them a phone call. Phone them and just say to them, just a phone call to say I love you. Because every time I speak to my son or daughter, I finish with, love you. And they say the same back. Every time I'm on a phone call, every time I see them, when I see them, I say, love you, babes. Like, and then when I'm leaving, I go, I love you, babes. Sorry, but I've got to go, you know what I mean? I hate having to leave my daughter. I hate it. But I'll give her a call, actually. I did call her the other day, but then I got a text message off her saying her phone was about to die. She'll phone me later. She never did. So I'll probably get on the phone tomorrow about, oh, I'm not sure what time she's working tomorrow. So I normally wait till about half three, four-ish, because I know she's home by then. Well, I'll give her a call then. And then I've got my son coming over Sunday. So... 
from Sunday, I will be having my laptop, everything, all my crafts, all my craft work, everything on my table, everything is going into the balcony, this enclosed in balcony, and it's got like where it would have all been an open balcony, is now windows, right? So during the summer, if we ever get a summer here in the UK, which I don't think we're going to get, but if we ever get a really hot evening or a hot day, and I can sit in the balcony, shut my cats out, <laughs> and have my windows wide open and not be all sticky and horrible. Because while I'm in the living room, I can't have my windows wide open because the cats are in here. But in the balcony, I can shut the door and lock it and have my windows wide open then. So, from next week, I'll be in the balcony. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't affect my internet. I'm hoping it doesn't affect my internet by going into the balcony. If it does, then I'll just have to re rethink my situation. See if I can get my internet brought round closer to my balcony, maybe. Have a word with my supplier. Anyway, I just want to say thank you to everyone on X for being here. Thank you for the MCARS and the others that were in here earlier but didn't comment. I'd just like to say thank you to you all for being here. I really do appreciate you. I will do another live next week. So keep an eye out for that. Um, tomorrow I'm doing a live, but it's about Jay Slater. And it's just an up, update, really, of everything that's gone on since uh, about over a week ago. Once I stopped doing the lives and I started just doing the short videos. And I'm just going to do an update of everything that's going on and try and put a, a stop to some of these cons conspiracy theories that are going on out there. Because that's a, that's a crazy case as well. If you've been following it, it's just crazy. Anyway, so I'd just like to say thank you for being here. Thank you, MCARS. I hope you're okay driving. And I will see you tomorrow night. If you're interested, it's about Jay Slater. He's a missing lad, 19-year-old from UK, from the UK, went missing in Tenerife. And there's a lot of, it's very, people are being warned off to not go any further with the, infect, like, looking into this case and things like that. A lot of people are being warned off. Like searches, not to dig too deep, and we know why because there's a an element of criminality, and the D R U G S and abductions and all this lot going on. So there's an element of criminality that I'm now looking on into this case. Which they should have been doing from day one, I think. But anyway, so if you're interested, tomorrow night, live at 8 pm, Jay Slater. So please, if you want, come along and listen to that. If you haven't been following the case, come along and listen. Right? And you never know, you might be intrigued by it. So until then, I just want to say thank you all again for being here. I really, really, really do appreciate you all for being here. And I'll see you all soon. Good night, Ned.